chapter one of Math 133 is full of a whole variety of definitions. And section 1.1, quite frankly, is the most full of definitions. <laughs> because, of course, you can't really proceed in the course until you've learned the basic topics that you want to talk about. All right, so I'm sorry to say this page is full of not only definitions, but a couple typos right from the start. So statistics is the science of collecting, organizing, summarizing, and analyzing information to draw conclusions or answer questions. In addition, statistics provides a measure of confidence in any conclusions. That confidence that they're talking about there, we will talk about later in chapters 9 and 10 and 11. That's really talking about uh, margin of error and inferential statistics. Speaking of which, the course and the topic is broken up into a couple major subfields. There's the descriptive statistics and the inferential statistics. Now descriptive statistics are methods used to organize, summarize, and describe data including graphs, tables, numerical summaries. So when you hear somebody say, you know, the average exam score or I was in the 70th percentile, that's talking about descriptive statistics. That's the earlier chapters of the course, chapters two through four in particular. And then chapters nine, 10, 11, and if you went on to a statistics two class, 12, 13, 14, 15, they're all about inferential statistics, which is when you're trying to gain that measure of confidence and draw conclusions, right? So you wanna measure the reliability of the result. You wanna make those generalizations from um, the sample to the population. And you can't actually make that leap unless you take some time um, in chapters five through eight measuring reliability, i.e. working with probability, something called the central limit theorem and so on. So inferential statistics will be these chapters late in the course. And descriptive statistics will be these chapters early in the course, and then we'll take probability in the middle um, to make that bridge, to bridge that gap between those two topics. And it's quite a large gap, and it took a lot of very intelligent people thinking about it for a very long time to get it to work. All right, now let's think about statistics. When, you, when they say they're going to collect and analyze and summarize data up above, what is it they're talking about? Well, you have a population, and your population is the whole group. So if I was looking at this, the population is this whole big box here filled with all these people, right? So that's the population. And a sample is a subgroup, right? A subset of that population. So a sample right here would be, you know, this group is a sample. This group is a sample. Uh, this group right here, that's a sample, right? A sample is a subset of that population. And an individual is actually any single person in the population. A lot of people get it confused and think that the individual has to be from the sample. So an individual, by definition, is in the population. So any one of these smiley faces right here, they could be in the sample, they could not be in the sample. Every single one of them is an individual that could be drawn from the population and could be hypothetically eligible for a sample. Um, in general, our course will, we will assume, or our course will assume, there's another typo, sorry about this, will assume, I will fix all of that for future. So if you're watching this in a later semester, I will fix these typos. Um, our course will assume most samples are good representations of the population. In other words, they're unbiased samples. In real life research, that's far from true. Um, it depends on funding. It depends on whether people have an ax to grind. It depends on what you're doing. Um, but we will pretend that all samples are beautiful and perfect and unbiased because we don't really have a lot of options if they are biased. Um, the sample is the group of people or objects that you gather, not the pieces of information. So let's say I'm interested, I don't know, in the body temperatures of these people. Well, the sample is not their body temperatures. The sample is the people. And then you just gather information about them. You can gather all sorts of information. You know, if you're thinking in a nursing context, their names, their blood pressure, their body temperature, their weight, you gather all of that information, but the sample is the group of patients not the numbers. The numbers themselves are called statistics, which is actually a definition in a couple pages from now. Um, the population is all the people or objects that you could possibly gather information about. If someone or something could not possibly be in your sample, then it is not in the population you are studying. So that's an important thing to keep in mind when you want to try to figure out what your sample and population are. For an example, 
And I think all these definitions will become a little bit clearer if we look at an example. All right, so I have a recent survey of a random group of JC, um, Jackson College, where I teach students. Um, they were asked the question, which superpower would you prefer to have for yourself? Flight, invisibility, super speed, or super strength? And the results are below. So you can see these are the answers from the students. And yes, this is legit. I did ask this of a group of students, <laughs> just in case you're thinking, oh, you know, she just made up this data. No, no, no. These were legit students. Um, so how many students were in the sample? Well, we have one, two, three, four, five. Five times four makes 20. So there were 20 students in the sample total. What was the population for this study and what is an individual? All right, so this was a random group of JC students. You can see right here. So that is the sample. All right, now what's that a sample of? Well, um, the best way would be just to say all JC students, right? Now we could make some more arguments. We could make arguments, um, being real with you, they were math students. <laughs> so we could say all JC math students, that would be a little bit smaller of a group. Or we could say all college students in Michigan. That's true, right? It's not a very good sample because they all came from one college, but it is nevertheless a sample, right? So the, probably the best population to think of would be Jackson College students. All right, an individual then from the stu for this study. Now, even though it says for this study, the individual, remember, is always related to the population. So if your population is all JC students, then the individual, even though it says the words for this study, has to be a single JC student. All right, now let's do some, I, we collected, right? That's the collection part of statistics up here. So the, the information was collected and now we're gonna spend some time organizing it. So we're going to put, make a table of our four superpowers. So there was flight, invisibility, super speed, and super strength. And then frequency is a fancy way to say how many. What was the count? Right? All right, so you literally count. You count how many in the group are in flight, invisibility, super speed, and super strength. So flight is four, five, six, seven. Invisibility is one, two, three, four, five, six. Super speed, one, two, which is the one I would go for. <laughs> one, two, actually that's not true. I, I always dream of flying, three, four, five. So five, and super strength, one, two. Now if we did this correctly, when we add up these frequencies, they should make 20 because we set up here that it was 20. And by the way, the symbol for sample size is a lowercase n, n for number, right? It's the number of people in your sample, right? So we know it should make 20. 13 plus five makes 18, 20. And that symbol right there is a mathematical symbol meaning sum. It's actually a capital Greek letter um, called sigma. So it means you're going to sum. If you've ever been in Excel, it's called the auto sum feature. There's like a little icon for it and you can click it and it adds up the column. That's exactly what this means here. So I want to add this column. So the sum of this column is 20, which is great because that means I didn't mistake my counting as I was going through. All right, now which superpower was the most frequently chosen? That actually has a special name. It's called the mode. And you'll learn about that in section 3.1. The mode is whichever one has the highest frequency, which in this case was flight. And perhaps we should make a little note. Let's 
sum of the frequencies is equal to the sample size. If you do it right. <laughs> All right, now what percentage of students wanted super speed? Mm, okay, percent. Percent is 7 divided by 20. Now that's not a percentage, that's a fraction. So we would need a calculator or some kind of technology to be able to find that, like a phone. So I'm going to do it two ways. One, I'm going to show you on a TI-84 calculator in case you own that calculator. But if you don't own the calculator, a free app that you can get on your phone as well as on any internet browser is Desmos, D-E-S-M-O-S dot com slash calculator. And I can just type 7 over 20. And it tells me that it's 0.35. So that's a nice free graphing calculator. Very, very nice, actually. We use it a lot in algebra and calculus and things like that. But we won't use it much in stats. But if you want just a simple calculator without having to buy a TI-84, you could use that. So 0.35. Now I know what you're thinking. What about all of the statistics calculations? Well, we will use a TI-84 calculator or we will use an app called StatCrunch. So either one of those will work. All right, now inferential statistics, this is just to get you to think about it a little bit. Inferential statistics means you want to infer to the larger group. That's where the inferential part comes from. So infer means you want to make a generalization about the larger group, right? Okay, so there's several things we could infer. In our case, the larger group would be all JC students, right? Okay, so what's an inference we could make? Um, most students, we would imagine, at, at Jackson College would prefer flight as a superpower. Or we could say that um, very few students want super strength as a superpower. Right? If given a choice, they would not pick super strength. Those would be a couple easy generalizations to make. Um, let's just make one. So we think... We're not sure, of course, because this is a small sample, but... and. It's a sample. <laughs> even even if you even if it wasn't a even if it was a large sample, it's still a sample. So we think that uh, if given a choice, a superpower choice, uh, let me think. Uh, very few students would choose super strength. We could say that. Or you could say most students would choose flight. Or flight or invisibility. And there you go. All right, now what if we found out that instead of just a random group of JAC students, they were actually all calculus students, which they were. So now, what effect does that have on our generalization? Hmm. Well, I can't be specific, you know, we don't want to throw the calculus students under the bus or anything, but we can say that it's no longer a fair representation of all Jackson College students because it's really pulling from a very um, unique group, right? So we don't know exactly how it's going to affect our generalization, but for example, maybe a bunch of English students would pick super strength, right? Whereas a bunch of calculus students would not. That's a possibility. Or uh, maybe a bunch of, I don't know, uh, if you grabbed a class of nursing students, maybe they'd all want super speed <laughs> so they could get through their rotations faster or something like that. So the if, if the sample is all college students, or excuse me, all calculus students, This is not a fair representation not a fair representation of the population so that means that our generalization kind of has to be thrown out 
Or we could just say, if given a choice, very few instead of, oh, I should have said here, very few students of all JC students are here. Very few of all JC students here. What we'd have to say is it's only for calculus students, right? So very few calculus students would choose super strength. So we would just say, um, for example, we would write a very few out of all calculus students would choose super strength. I'll just leave it at that. Which shows us just the beginnings of even that little bit of bias can really affect what your generalization can be. If you knew it was from a cross section of all JC students, that would be very different than knowing it comes from one particular class or type of class. And you, again, you can imagine nursing students might have a different response than art students, which might have a different response than calculus students. That's what bias can do to you and due to your generalizations.